Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Good Garvey Day to my continental Africans. Ghana, Nigeria, Congo, Botswana, Gambia, Zambia, Malawi, Ethiopia, Senegal, Togo, Benin, Lesotho, South Africa, Mozambique, Angola, Zimbabwe, Cape Verde. Good Garvey Day to my continental Africans. Good Garvey Day to my European Africans, my French brothers and sisters. British brothers and sisters, I will see you tomorrow morning. Austria, Germany, my Irish Africans, my German Africans, peace and Pan-Africanism to my Canadian Africans, Montreal and Toronto and Nova Scotia. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Central American Af Africans, Costa Rica, Panama, I will see y'all August 16th to the 18th, Costa Rica Garvey Sankofa Conference. Peace and Pan Africanism to my South American Africans, my Surinamese Africans, my Guyanese and Brazilian Africans. Peace and Pan Africanism to my Caribbean Africans, my Jamaican Africans, my Haitian Africans, my Barbadian Africans my Bermudian Africans, my St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. Vincent, St. Martin, St. Lucia Africans, my Cuban Africans, my Puerto Rican Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Texas Africans, my Minnesota Africans, my Michigan Africans, my Illinois Africans, my Arizona my Texas, my Mississippi, my Alabama, my Arkansas, Kentucky, and Tennessee Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Connecticut Africans, my Pennsylvania, Jersey, Maryland, D.C., my Rhode Island, Connecticut Africans, my Omaha, Nebraska, my St. Louis Africans, my Kansas City Africans. But this morning, I'm waking up with my Atlanta, Georgia Africans. This morning, I'm waking up with my Atlanta, Georgia Africans. This morning, I'm waking up. Where that hot breakfast at for King Kong in Atlanta? Where is that hot Southern breakfast at for King Kong, the hardest working man in black consciousness, the hardest working man in black political science, the hardest working man in black Pan-Africanism? Where's that home cooked, restaurant cooked, Soul food breakfast for King Kong consciousness in Atlanta, Georgia. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to keep you. Special shout out to all my Leo season Africans. Where are my Leos at? Lions and lionesses, where are you? Lions and lionesses, where are you? Whether you a July Leo or August Leo, you are still a Leo all the same. Whether you are a July Leo or an August Leo, you are still a Leo all the same. Whether you are a July Leo or an August Leo, you are still a Leo all the same. We're my Black August birthday family. Whether you a Leo or Virgo, we're my Black August birthday family. Whether you a Leo or Virgo, we're my Black August birthday family no sister I've never been to a ditty party I have never been to a ditty party I don't even go to parties I don't go to parties period it's just not something I do I'm a very spiritual brother so I don't really have a need to go once in a while I'll pull up out of respect when I get to London I'm going to a party in London England tomorrow I'm going to a party in London, England tomorrow. My big sister, Kemet, 
is having her solar return party. I will be at Sister Kemet's party in London, England tomorrow. I will be at Sister Kemet's party in London, England tomorrow, but I don't normally go to parties, family. I don't normally go to parties, family. This is what I wanted to say to the Scamala Harris campaign. My inbox is flooded with reactionary, emotional Scamala Harris Democratic Party plantation slaves. My inbox has been flooded by Democratic Party plantation slaves of the Kamala Harris campaign. This is what I want to say to the Democratic Party plantation slaves of the Scamala Harris campaign. If y'all want black people, to stop talking about Scamala's racial heritage. If y'all want black people to stop talking about Scamala Harris's racial heritage. If y'all want black people to stop talking about Scamala Harris's racial heritage, all you have to do is start talking about policies and programs and we will stop talking about her race. Let me say this again. This is advice for the Scamala Harris campaign. I'm giving out advice for the Scamala Harris campaign. I'm giving out advice for the Scamala Harris campaign. The reason American Africans are overly concerned about her race is due to the fact that so far, her race has been the only reason given by the Democratic Party plantation as to why black people should vote for her. I want to say this again. I'm going to repeat myself. If I tune day three times, London, England, I will see you Sunday afternoon. London, England, I will see you at the Dr. Umar Power Lecture Sunday afternoon. London, England, I will see you at the Dr. Umar Power Lecture Sunday, God willing, let me repeat this. The reason the American African kingdom, the reason the American African kingdom keeps talking about Scamala Harris's artificial African ancestry is because it's the only reason the Democratic plantation has given us as to why we should vote for her. The only reason you guys are telling us that we should vote for Scamala Harris is because she's black. That is the only reason you have given as to why black people should vote for her. Identity politics. Identity politics. Useless identity politics. If you want us to vote for Scamala, stop talking about race. Because even if she has a black grandparent, which has not yet been proven, even if she has a black grandparent, which has not yet been proven, even if she has a black grandparent, which has not yet been proven, she's rarely, if at all, ever identified as African until she ran for vice president four years ago. And don't tell me her membership in the great sorority Alpha, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And don't tell me that her membership in the great esteemed sorority of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Don't tell me that Scamala's membership in the great pink and green legacy of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is a justification of her race. Don't tell me that being an AKA makes her black. Because there are Caucasian AKAs, just like there are Caucasian Zetas. There are Caucasian Sigma Gamma Rose. There are Caucasian Deltas. There's Caucasian Alphas and Caucasian Sigmas and Caucasian Kappas and Caucasian Omega Psi Phi. So you can't say that just because she joined a black fraternity 40 years ago, because she joined a black fraternity 40 years ago, that certifies her as black. You can't because all of the black sororities are multicultural and colorblind. All the black fraternities are multicultural and colorblind. So you can't use her membership in the beautiful, powerful, esteemed Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. You can't use that as a certification of her race because there are 
non-African members in the black sororities and fraternities. All I'm saying to the Scamela Harris campaign, all I'm saying to the Scamela Harris campaign, if you want black people to vote, talk about policy. Stop talking about race. Talk about Donald Trump. Nobody's talking about him being black because he never claimed to be. So we can focus on his policies and he hasn't articulated any clear policy for the American African. If you notice, Donald Trump, just like Scamela, he talks vaguely to black people. I'm going to rebuild the inner city. How are you going to rebuild it? By gentrifying black people? How are you going to rebuild it? By helping white people take over the inner city? Donald Trump is very vague with his black programs. He can't be trusted. Scamela Harris hasn't even spoken to a black program. She's carrying on her campaign just like Barack Obama. Scamela is carrying on her campaign just like Barack Obama. Scamela is carrying on her campaign just like Barack. Barack didn't say one thing to black people or about black people. Barack didn't say one thing to black people or about black people. When he was campaigning, he didn't say one thing to black people or about black people. Scamela is going to do the same thing. Scamela is going to do the same thing. Donald Trump will mention blacks, but no specific promises, promises or policies. Donald Trump will mention blacks, but no specific policies or programs. He's a fraud. Scamela Harris is also a fraud. All y'all have to do is talk about what she's going to do for black people. And we will stop talking about race. But if the only reason you're giving us for a black vote is the color of her skin, that's not going to fly. If the only reason you're giving us as to why she should get the black vote is the color of her skin, identity politics died with the Barack Obama administration. Identity politics died with the Barack Obama administration. Identity politics died with the Barack. I'm not voting for either one. Vote for what? Vote for what? I got the vote for what t-shirts coming out soon, brothers and sisters. I got I got the vote for what t-shirts coming out soon, brothers and sisters. I got the vote for what? Oh, no. You don't choose the president anyway. But nonetheless... You don't choose the president anyway, but nonetheless, you don't choose the president anyway, but nonetheless, let me take y'all back to the George Floyd protest for justice. Can we go back four years, please, brothers and family, brothers and sisters? Can I take you back? This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism live from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm going to one of those malls in a minute. Get me something to wear. Get me some food to eat. Atlanta, Georgia, I'm pulling up in one of your malls to get me some food and get me something to wear in a minute. But before I head on out on the streets of Atlanta, before I head on out on the streets of Atlanta this morning, before I head on out on the streets of Atlanta, Georgia this morning, I might pull up at Slutty Vegan, Ty Silly's Raw Vegan. Let me say this. Four years ago, during the George Floyd protests, which occurred at the same time. Which occurred around the same time as the campaign for presidency was taking place. Nancy Pelosi's email got exposed. Former Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. Remember the Caucasian who went to Ghana during the year of return in 2019 and put on some made in China kente cloth? Do y'all remember when the white Democrats went to the slave dungeons of Ghana? Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Ghanaian Africans. I will see you in the Volta region October 30th to November the 5th. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Ghanaian Africans in West Africa. I will see you in the Volta region October 30th to November 5th. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Ghanaian Africans. I will see you in the Volta region October 30th to November the 5th. Who remembers 
during the 2020 election, during the George Floyd protests, during the election campaigns for president, who remembers the presidential campaigns of 2020 that took place during the George Floyd protests? Nancy Pelosi, Democratic leader, Nancy Pelosi's email got exposed. Who remembers that? Who remembers when Nancy Pelosi's email got exposed during the 2020 George Floyd protests for justice in U.S. presidential campaigns? Who remembers that? Nancy Pelosi wrote an email to all Democrats. And I want all Scamala Harris campaign representatives to hear me. I want all American African Democratic Party plantation slaves to listen up real quick. I want all American African Democratic Party plantation slaves to listen up. Nancy Pelosi's email got exposed in 2020. Who remembers what Nancy Pelosi said? Who remembers what Nancy Pelosi said? Who remembers what Nancy Pelosi said? Nancy Pelosi said to the Democratic Party's candidates running for office. Listen to me. This is what the leading Democrat, other than the president and the vice president. Excuse me. Trump was in office. The Democrats were running to regain office. Nancy Pelosi told all Democrats in America running for office in 2020 during the George Floyd protests. Nancy Pelosi told all Democratic Party candidates running for office during the 2020 George Floyd protests. Nancy Pelosi, former Speaker of the House, Democratic Party leader. She was the highest ranking Democrat other than Joe Biden, who was a candidate for office at the time. She was the highest ranking Democrat other than Joe Biden, who was campaigning for office at the time. Nancy Pelosi sent the email to all Democratic candidates running for office in the 2020 election. And she said, do not promise Black Lives Matter or any other black activists any specific policy or programs. I'm going to repeat what I just said because y'all didn't hear me. I'm going to repeat what I just said because y'all didn't hear me. I'm going to repeat what I just said. If I tuned day three times. If I tuned day three times. If I tuned day three times. Nancy Pelosi said, do not promise black activists any specific programs or policies. Nancy Pelosi said, do not promise black activists any specific programs or policies. Nancy Pelosi said, do not promise black people any specific programs or policies. Then she said, then she said, try not to meet with black people in large groups. Only meet with individuals and small groups. This is Nancy Pelosi's orders to all Democrats running for public office in the 2020 elections. She told them, do not meet with large groups of black people. Try to meet one-on-one -on -one and try to meet small group. Do y'all know why she said that? Who knows why she said, why did Nancy Pelosi tell all Democrat candidates for the 2020 election cycle not to meet with large groups of blacks she told them to only meet with individuals in small groups do you want to know why do you want to know why so they could not be held accountable for what they said so they cannot be held accountable for what they said that's why Barack Obama didn't say nothing to black people. That's why Barack Obama didn't promise nothing to black people. That's why Joe Biden didn't promise nothing to black people. That's why Joe Biden didn't speak to black people. That's why Scamala Harris isn't addressing black people because if they make a promise, they can be held accountable. If they make a promise to American Africans, they can be held accountable. So they're just going to ignore you altogether. They're going to ignore you altogether and they're going to hope.
that they still get your vote. They're going to ignore you altogether and they're going to hope that they still get your vote. They're going to ignore you altogether and they're going to hope that they still get your vote. Nobody cares about black people. The best thing we can do is organize that vote in these last four months. Well, three months. Today is what, August the 9th? Election day is November the 5th. You got 12 weeks to organize the black vote and do not vote unless you have a direct conversation and direct promises from either candidate. Direct conversation and direct promises. If there is no direct conversation to black people, and if there are no direct promises to black people, we will be holding our vote. We will be holding our vote. I know the slaves of the Democratic Party plantation, and I know the slaves of the Republican Party plantation don't want to hear Dr. Umar say that. I understand the slaves of the Democratic Party and the slaves of the Republican Party don't want to hear me say that. Y'all don't want to hear me say that. But I'm telling black people, we should stand in solidarity with a no vote if we're not going to get a direct conversation or direct policy pledges from either candidate. I'm going to say it again. We should stand in solidarity with a no vote if we don't get direct policy promises and direct conversation for the black community. Don't you let them play you out as a person of color. Don't you let them play you out as a person of color. Don't you let them play you out as a person of color. Don't let them play you out as a minority. That's right. Talk to us or look for nothing from us. Until you talk to us, don't look for nothing from us. We will stand in solidarity with a no vote. Donald Trump, you got three months to start talking about specific policies and programs for African Americans. Donald Trump, you got three months. Scamala. Scamala Harris, you got 90 days, less than 90 days till election day to start talking specifically about black folks, not minorities. That is an insult. Brothers and sisters, stop letting people talk to us as minorities and people of color. Stop letting people talk to us as minorities and people of color. Stop letting people talk to us as minorities and people of color. Tell them. Address the American African people exclusively and particularly. Address the American African people exclusively and particularly. You must address the American African people exclusively and particularly. And there's five things y'all better address if you want a black vote. Y'all better address gentrification and homelessness for black people, not for Americans, not for minorities, not for people of color, for black people. Y'all better address the migrant crisis, gentrification and homelessness. Y'all better address the migrant crisis, gentrification and homelessness, better wise known as ethnic cleansing of black communities. Y'all better address the ethnic cleansing of black communities. Y'all better address the ethnic cleansing. Y'all better address mass incarceration in the school to prison pipeline. Y'all better address mass incarceration in the school to prison pipeline. Y'all better address mass incarceration in the school to prison pipeline. Y'all better address police genocide and black femicide. Y'all better address police genocide and black femicide. Y'all better address police genocide and black femicide. Y'all better address. Y'all better address reparations and compensation for slavery and continuous discrimination of American Africans. Y'all better address reparations and compensation, not only for slavery, but for the continuous discrimination 
against the American African people since 1865. 159 years later, we still catching hell. 159 years later, we still catching hell. 159 years later, we still catching hell. And number five, y'all better deal with the economic apartheid. Y'all better deal with the economic apartheid and economic destruction of the black community. I'm talking redlining by banks. I'm talking redlining by banks. I'm talking redline. I'm talking building industries so we can have black jobs for black people. I'm talking about building industries in the black community so we can have black jobs for black people. I'm talking about building industries in the black community so we can have black jobs for black people. But they're not going to address us. They're not going to address us because we created, we set a bad precedent when we let Barack Obama get away. We're not dealing with black people and we celebrated him and we still celebrate him. We said we put ourselves in a very bad position. We put ourselves in a very bad position 12 years ago. Excuse me, eight years ago. Actually, 16 years ago, between 16 and eight years ago, when we worshiped Barack Obama for doing absolutely nothing for black people, we set up a situation where presidential candidates don't have to address black people anymore. I told you all this. This was in the prophecies of Ifa Tunde, 2012. This was in the prophecies of Ifa Tunde, 2016. I told y'all, not holding Barack Obama accountable means you can't hold nobody else accountable. Not holding Barack Obama accountable means you can't hold anybody else accountable. Not holding Barack Obama accountable means you can't hold anybody else accountable. Brothers and sisters, get your passport. All my Pan-Africanists in America, all my American African Pan-Africanists, please get your passport. Please get your passport because if it get too crazy, we're going to have to charter a plane and fly right back to Africa. I said, if it gets too crazy, I'm going to have to get with Delta Airlines. I'm going to have to get with United Airlines. I'm going to have to get with American Airlines. I'm going to have to get with Spirit or Frontier or Southwest. I'm going to have to charter a plane and get my American African Pan-Africanist off this plantation and back home to Africa. If you feeling me, ladies, make a heart. If you feeling me, brothers, give me a black fist. If you feeling me, ladies, make a heart. If you feeling me, brothers, get a black fist. If you feeling me, ladies, make a heart. If you feeling me, brothers, give me a black fist. Get your passport, brothers and sisters, because we might have to charter a plane and get our asses up out of here. Make sure you get your passport. Make sure you get your passport, brothers and sisters. Make sure you get your passport, brothers and sisters. Please make sure you get your passport, because we might got to get up out of here. We might got to get up out of here. Please get your passport. Please get your passport. Please get your passport, brothers and sisters. Please get your passport. Because we might got to get up off this plant. When the plantation starts to burn, we might got to get back home. When the plantation starts to burn, we might got to get back home. I don't know what the pretendians are going to do. I don't know what my pretendians... Pretendians, I still love y'all. Y'all just self-hating blacks. But what are y'all going to do when the plantation starts to burn? Because y'all don't got no land. Y'all ain't got no institutions. Y'all not from Africa. I don't know what the pretendians are going to do. I'll tell you what. We'll take the pretendian children to Africa with us. We will take the pretendian children to Africa with us. We will take, since y'all don't have no resources, y'all ain't got no institutions, y'all don't do nothing but talk shit on, on Facebook and Instagram. Pretendians, we will take your African babies with us. I don't want the pretendian children to suffer because of the self-hate of their pretendian parents. I don't want the pretendian children to suffer because of the self-hate of their pretendian parents. I don't want the pretendian children. Send my African children back home to Africa with us. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. 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 Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Brothers and sisters, who is really ready to commit 
25% of their income to black liberation. Let's see who real serious right now. I'm asking my American African family, how many of you are willing to donate 25% of your income to African liberation? Let's see who's serious right now. Let's see who's serious right now. Who is willing to donate? Not today. We have to create the necessary structure to receive the finances and account for the finances. We have to create the necessary structure to receive the finances and account for the finances. How many American Africans are willing to donate 25% of your income? How many American Africans are willing to donate 25% of your income to black liberation? That's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. We need to go through the black community and buy up every business. Any business for sale needs to be purchased so we can put our people to work. When are we going to get serious? Do you know every Sunday paper has a list of businesses for sale in the classified? Every Sunday paper has a list of businesses for sale in the classified section. Every Sunday paper has a list of businesses for sale in the classified section. We need to buy up all businesses for sale in every black community so we can put our people to work. We can win, brothers and sisters. We can win. We can win, brothers and sisters. We can win. We can win, brothers and sisters, but we can't win sitting on our asses. We can't win without using our money. And we can't win trying to hold hands with people who are not black. We owe nobody nothing but an ass whipping. The African, and I'm speaking globally now. Now, let me go to my United Kingdom Africans for a minute. I heard that the riots, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I heard that the race riots in the UK right now were triggered because a mentally ill British African brother unalived three Caucasian girls. Is this correct? This is what I've been told. That the riots in the UK were triggered because a mentally ill British African unalived Three innocent Caucasian children. Is that correct? Is that correct? First of all, I don't condone murder of children regardless of color. I don't condone murder of children regardless of color. I'm sorry for the loss to those parents. I'm sorry for the loss to those parents. I'm sorry for the loss to those parents. But first of all, we need to make sure that the story is true. That's number one. We need to fact check to make sure that is exactly what happened. We need to fact check in the UK to make sure that is exactly what happened. If mental illness was the cause of the crime, if mental illness was in fact the cause of the crime in the United Kingdom, and we will talk about this on Sunday, and we will talk about this in London on Sunday, and we will talk about this in London on Sunday. Then the question becomes, in my opinion, if a mentally ill person commits an egregious crime such as this, I'm going to have to ask the authorities. I'm going to have to ask the mental health establishment. I'm going to have to ask the government. I'm going to have to ask the social service agencies why was this mentally ill person unsupervised? That I want to understand 
if why was this mentally incompetent person unsupervised? That's the next question. Mentally ill people are not responsible for themselves. Mentally ill people cannot be responsible for themselves. So I need answers from the British government. I need answers from British social services. I need answers from the British mental health establishment. Mentally ill people are not responsible for themselves. That family, my condolences goes out to that family. That family needs to sue the government. Why weren't the appropriate supports and services in place for that brother? That's the question. We're going to talk about it in London. I don't want to say too much on Instagram. We're going to talk about this when we have our private conversation with our British African brothers and sisters on Sunday. We're going to talk about this when we have our private conversation with our British African brothers and sisters. But what we're not going to do, what we're not going to do is let them try to scapegoat black people due to racial hatred. What we're not going to do is let them try to scapegoat the British African community and bring harm to our community, our brothers and sisters and children and elders. We're not going to stand for that. We're not going to stand for that. Because this was a crime of the system that failed that young man and failed those three innocent girls. My condolences to their family. This was a breakdown in the system of mental health in the United Kingdom. You will not scapegoat black America. You will not scapegoat black Britain. You will not scapegoat black Britain. Your anger should be at the system that didn't provide that young man with the services he required. Your anger should be at the system. This almost sounds like Brendan Depa 2.0. This almost sounds like the Brendan Depa case 2.0. This almost sounds like the Brendan Depa case 2.0. We didn't do what we should have done for the black mentally ill. We didn't do what we should have done for the black mentally ill. We didn't do what we should have done for the black mentally ill. So we just going to take it out on all black people. We not having that. We not having that. We will defend our Africans in Britain. We will defend the black community in Britain. We are sorry for the loss. We are sorry for the loss. No child should ever. No child should lose their life. No child regardless of race i'm sorry for the loss but you can then not turn around and senselessly commit violence and murder against the british african family and think we're going to stand there and let you do that we will not tolerate it we will not tolerate it there needs to be a serious conversation in black america and the black united kingdom there needs to be a serious conversation in black America and in the black United Kingdom on racism in the mental health establishment. Our mentally ill Africans in Europe, our mentally ill Africans in America, our mentally ill Africans in Canada, our mentally ill Africans in South Africa, our mentally ill Africans in Central and South America are not getting the appropriate services and is leading to travesties and tragedies. Our mentally ill Africans who live in predominant white societies, our mentally ill Africans who live in predominant white societies are not getting the appropriate services and is leading to tragedies and travesties that were preventable. We're going to have to have this is why I might have to go to law school and become a mental health attorney. This is why I might have to go to law school and become a mental health attorney. This is why I might have to go to law school and become a mental health attorney. Because black mentally ill people are not getting the service and support that they deserve. I never call black Brazilians Latino. So I don't know what you're talking about, my brother. I never call Brazilians. Brazilians speak Portuguese. Brazilians speak Portuguese. I never call my Brazilian African brothers and sisters Latino. 
I never called my Brazilian African brothers and sisters Latino. And I hope some of my Brazilian African brothers and sisters meet me in Costa Rica August 16th to the 18th. I'm hoping some of my Brazilian African, Surinamese African, Guyanese African brothers and sisters meet me in Costa Rica August the 16th through the 18th. How are you going to run a school and go to school? I tell you what, why don't you leave that to me? How is Dr. Umar going to run a school and go to school? How about you leave that to me? I think sometimes y'all be a little bit too concerned about my personal business. Much respect to you, family. But sometimes I think y'all be a little bit too concerned about my personal business. How is he going to run a school and go to school? Why don't you leave that to me? Why don't you leave that to me? How about you leave that to me? Brazilians are Latinos, but not Hispanic because you don't speak Spanish. That's what somebody just said. I'm going to have to investigate that statement. To my knowledge, African Brazilians do not identify as Latino. To my knowledge, Brazilian Africans do not identify as Latino. I'm going to go to law school. And, one, and my queens will do all my law school homework. I already know how to win the cases. I'm already a mental health lawyer. I'm already a special ed lawyer. So I get my wife to do all the work. Any lawyers out there? I need a lawyer queen. Any, any lawyers out there? I need a lawyer queen. I'm going to need a lawyer queen to do all my law school work. So I can get this law degree ASAP. Brazilians said they are Africans. Brazilian Africans, not Latinos. Brothers and sisters, we have to reconnect to the Almighty. Brothers and sisters, we have to reconnect to the Almighty. Brothers and sisters, we have to reconnect to the Almighty. If we do not start being more conscious of how we are being perceived by the most high, if the American African, if the global African, because this is a pan-Africanist movement, if we don't become more conscious or conscientious of how the almighty is perceiving us from heaven, we may never get out of this. We have to fight our way out, but God won't even open up the road if we don't get our African minds back. We have so many ills in the black community that the white man cannot and will not solve. We have so many ills in the black community that the white man cannot and will not solve. So we cannot try to distract away from our own self-imposed problems in the black community by overly focusing on Scamala Harris and Agent Orange. Scamala Harris and Agent Orange are not going to solve the problems in the black community. We have psychological problems that need to be solved. Self-hate. Jealousy, envy. These are psychological problems. Reparations can't solve it. Scamala and Agent Orange can't solve it. I said we got psychological issues in the black community that Agent Orange can't solve, Scamala can't solve, and reparations can't solve. What are we going to do about black on black jealousy? What are we going to do about black on black jealousy? I'm asking a question. This is King Kong Consciousness live in Atlanta, Georgia, getting ready for London. This is King Kong Consciousness live in Atlanta, Georgia, getting ready for London. What are we going to do about black on black jealousy? What are we going to do about black on black jealousy? What are we going to do about black on black envy? 
What are we going to do about black on black envy? What are we going to do about black on black envy? What are we going to do about child sex abuse in the black community? What are we going to do about child sex abuse in the black community? What are we going to do about domestic violence? And these are psychological illnesses that the white man can't solve. What are we going to do about the psychological illnesses in the black community that the white man can't solve? What are we going to do about the bunny hopping disease? Black men destroying generational melanin. What are we going to do about all these black men and women destroying intergenerational melanin through the bunny hop? That's a psychological illness. The snow bunny crisis is a psychological illness. The next FDM. The next FDMG paint day will be September 1st, September 2nd. Who's coming out to help us paint the final coat? Who's coming to FDMG September 1st, September 2nd for paint day? Who's coming to the most honorable Frederick Douglass and the most honorable Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy for paint day September 1st and September 2nd? Who's coming to the paint day? September 1st, September 2nd. Ladies, if you painting, you must dress appropriately. Ladies, if you come into paint day, you must dress appropriately. Cover up your body, my queens. Cover up your body, my queens. I'll be in London on Sunday. Where have you been, family? I will be in London on Sunday. Where have you been, family? I will be in London on Sunday. Where my queens coming to paint day? Where my queens coming to paint day? September 1st, September 2nd. You have to text me to register. You cannot just pull up. There will be no pull-ups at paint day. If you're not registered, you're not painting. You got to text me to register. Text me your donation handle. I got to make sure you have donated to the school. I got to make sure you have donated to the school. I have to make sure, send me your donation, your handle. How much have you donated to FDMG? Your first name, your last name, the city that you're based in. If you want to come to paint day, September 1st or September 2nd. Is Suki Hana coming to paint day? You got to ask Suki Hana. Is Suki Hana coming to paint day? You got to ask Suki Hana. Is Suki Hana coming to paint day? You got to ask Suki Hana. But the question is, are you coming to paint day? The question is, are you coming to paint day? I need brothers and I need sisters. September 1st, September 2nd, we are going to finish the paint so we can do the floors. September 1st, September 2nd, we are going to finish the paint so we can do the floors. September 1st, September 2nd, we are going to finish the paint. So we can do the floors. I love Somali Africans. I love all African people. Toronto, October 5th and 6th. Hit the cash app. Dollar sign FDMG school. We got to buy some more paint. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. But let's get back to the psychological illnesses in the black community that only black people can solve. Can you come to paint day with your snow bunny? I don't even have to answer that question, my brother. You know the rules. You know the rules. What are we going to do about black parents jealous of their black children? What are we going to do about black parents being jealous of their black children? What are we going to do about black parents being jealous of their black children? These are the psychological illnesses. 
What are we going to do about the toxic egos? The toxic competition between black men. What are we going to do about the HNIC? What are we going to do about the fact black women keep on bleaching their hair and wearing Caucasian colored weaves and wigs? What are we going to do about black women bleaching their hair Caucasian colors and wearing Caucasian colored weaves and wigs? That's a psychological problem. Black women dying and frying and bleaching their hair Caucasian hair color, Caucasian weaves and wigs. That's a mental health issue. That's a mental health issue. That's a mental health issue. Our biggest problems are psychological. Money can't fix them. The white man can't fix them. Can we please stop distracting from the real issues? Let me do a couple tap ins. Anybody want to tap in before I head out to the mall? Anybody want to tap in before I head out to the mall? Hit your tap in button. Hit your tap in button. Who want to tap in with the prince real quick? Hit your tap in button. You want to tap in with King Kong? Hit your tap in button. Hit your tap in button. Who want to tap in with the prince? Sister Nish. Shell going twice. Where's Sister Nichelle at? Hey, good morning. How you doing there? Good morning, beautiful. Where you at in the world? I am in Charlotte, North Carolina, waiting for you to come back. Yes, ma'am. I think I'm in Charlotte. Is it November or September? I got to double check, but Charlotte is on the schedule, my sister. Okay. Charlotte is on the schedule. What's your take on all that's going on? I want to our... just speak on the uh what you were just talking about uh us and our hair yes so um i actually owned um a hair company for a few years um just because i felt like we were the number one consumer hold on one second hey i'm actually on the phone thank you can i get back to you all right thank you uh, sorry about that and um i i wanted to do it because i felt like we were one of the number one consumers but it was really owned by asians and by middle easterns and um what i wanted to touch on is how we aren't accepted i found the common theme was us black women and our natural hair mm -hmm. and i find some black men go through this too it's not accepted in corporate America in its no. natural state. It just it just isn't. Um, a lot of us have to straighten our hair for interviews. And then maybe when once we're hired, we could rock our fros. But it's a certain way we have to maneuver, unfortunately, because for whatever reason, our hair in its natural state and I find this with black people too, we're just judged differently. So you say even black people don't want to see your hair yes. in its natural state. Yes. So let me ask you this from a Gariite perspective. I agree with what you're saying. So let me ask you this first though. Has the Crown Act made it better? Because the Crown Act makes it illegal to discriminate against natural hairstyles i don't think and i'm originally from new york okay so i feel like maybe up north maybe but down south not too much no so here's my, my visionary question for you good sister my visionary question when do black women come together and say so what white people don't like it so what our own people don't like it let's take this 30 billion dollars we dumping into the beauty industry every year and let's take that 30 billion dollars and build businesses for black women so we don't have to go beg white corporate america for jobs and we can wear our hair any kind of way we want the amount of money that black women are contributing annually to right. this fake hair care market. Right. It's an insane 
an amount of money. I mean, mm -hmm. there's enough money there for y'all to each build your own business and wear your hair any kind of way you want. Right. So when do we get to that point? Right. Right. And I don't I don't know the answer to that. I just I know that Have you ever the, the, been invited to a meeting by black women to organize black women into a unitary whole? Are black women talking about working with each other or are y'all still just as segregated and separated as you've always been? Because I think black right. women could build a powerful movement if y'all could just stick together. Right. I... Do, do, why do you think black women, and we talking only black women, why do you think black women are not coming together in mass right. to do something for the sisterhood? What is keeping black women from coming together? Competition, competition for sure. And it's one of those things that I only talk to uh, in very intimate settings um, because it's something that I don't like. I don't feel comfortable talking obviously around other people. Yeah. But I, t I talk about this like in the hair salon, um, like, in corporate settings, it's not it's not the others who give me the hardest time. Actually, it's it's the the women who look like me a lot of times. What is the main thing? Before I let you go, what is the main thing that drives competition between Black women? What are you guys most likely to be competing over? I don't know. Give me no, two I, things. Give me two things that, in your experience, tends to drive the competition between Black women, thereby undermining unity within the female kingdom. I saw someone say men. I don't think it's men. You don't think, I honestly think it's men? It, no, I think that um, for, from what I see, it's... Um, it's it's a lot of times older women um envying younger women in the work atmosphere um like i said i think it's competition but i don't know because i i like embracing young women and i i love mentoring them like but that's my desire i can't speak for other women um it, it may have something to do with how people was brought up you know um i, I don't know but it, it's not a very warm environment a lot of times when i come across women who look like me um a lot of times in the workforce and and day to day nah i'm talking about elders let me ask you a question on that elder piece do you feel that younger women your generation and younger do y'all show enough reverence to the elder queen mothers like do y'all respect the elder queen mothers or are younger black women dismissive of our elder women like in other words is this a one-way thing where they're just being dismissive or disrespectful to you guys, or is the same energy coming back towards them as well? Do we show enough reverence to our elders? That's a great point. That's a great point. I think that, um, I think it's a respect thing. I think that, um, I think if, unfortunately, I think if they carry themselves a certain way, respect is there. But there's something with that Gen X generation where they still think they're young <laughs> when really they are the new elders. But if if they out here twerking and it, they're not going to get that same respect because they're competing with women 20, 30 years younger than them when really they're the new elders. Okay, I'll feel you. I'll feel you. I appreciate that, Queen. Thanks for tapping in and I'm going to see you in Charlotte soon. All right. All right. Salute. Be blessed. Bye. Who tapping in next? Who tapping in next? Who tapping in next? She said the elders be disrespecting the youth, 
but do the youth be disrespecting the elders? Are black women competing over men or are they competing over power?